So now, um, because it's like three o'clock in the morning where Luke is in Luxembourg, we're going to tap him on the shoulder. And he, he didn't know if we were recording earlier, but I'm going to tell you, we're recording now. And this is going to be, this is going to be seen by all of uh, my, my, uh, Patreons and and our members sure. who pay who pay to to see the crappiest videos on the because no. <laughs> I'm not editing this. This is going straight up. Uh, and I just if you could uh, introduce yourself one uh, real quickly, and then you know if you want to show off a few of your pieces again. Sure, I can show them again. Um, by the way, first I am um, pronouncing my name how it should be. Now it's French. It's very difficult. It's called Luc Houdremont. I am from Luxembourg, a very small country beside Belgium. By the way, I'm also half German because my mother is from Germany. So, um, but we speak four languages here in this country. It's like a bit like uh, Switzerland, Luxembourgish, French, uh, German, and also uh, English most of the time. But yeah, I have been collecting meteorites for like around 10 years from now. And I have discovered this channel around three weeks ago and have been watching these hangouts on a daily basis uh, for like three weeks. So I have gathered a lot of knowledge that helped me also to identify my own meteorites that I already have. And also not getting into meteor wrongs when I buy them on eBay, because there is so many fakes out there these days. Yeah. yeah. So that's it for my person, for my collection. You just, nice. what do you want me to show well, you again? I, first, first, I want to just show my appreciation for, for you actually just joining us. You know, we put we put our hangout information online. We say, hey, everyone's welcome. And it's it's really nice and, and encouraging when we actually have uh, a, a new member hang out with us. So <laughs> earlier you, you were showing some of your, uh, your, your Gebel Hamel, which is an iron. Uh, sure. And, so and I you just showed also your some some uh, um, uh, stonies. I, I'd like to kind of focus on the stony ones, if that's okay with yeah. you, because I want to I, I want to show our rock hounders who may be watching this. We just poo pooed on like four or five samples. Now let's just doo -doo 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 -doo. let's clean our eyes. Let's look at some real meteorites. These are not going to be the freshest meteorites. They're not going to have fusion crust. These are going to be more weathered samples. This is going to be what you should look for in your samples now. So, Luke, I'll put it over to you, man. And then, crew, if you want to jump in, uh, we can. Okay. But just, let's so not talk first over again, this is my more or less entire collection. You can see these boxes here. These are mostly chronoids from Morocco. Um, so maybe I just get one, which is very typical. I showed this one earlier when it wasn't recording. Okay, so this one here is an oriented um, chronoid. Yep. You can see where it entered the atmosphere. Yeah, and here on the back, there is some fusion cross, but not so much. Uh, but I'm not sure if you can see any crown roots in there. That's the problem. But anyway, this is an oriented, slightly weathered meteorite from Morocco. Mm -hmm. uh, so up to the next one. Uh, also okay. showed this one earlier. This is my biggest, I think, heaviest chronoid. This is quite heavily weathered. But there you can see some old fusion crust. And mm -hmm. here also there is a chip. You can see the inside of it. And, and you can see chondrules like right there on, on the on the flat, right there pointing straight at us in the like at, at three o'clock. You can see chondrules. This one? Yes. All, all of this. You ah, can yeah, see yes. metal flames, Metal, yeah. everything. Yeah. No, yeah. it's quite shining to the yeah. You yeah. can see this one here. That's mm -hmm. maybe from cleaning. I removed some of that rust because I got it from a Moroccan seller at an exhibition. It was so full of rust. And uh, then some of those got quite shiny after cleaning. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to remove that fusion crust. So I stopped at this point because I think yeah, no, like this, this is just. So then 
this one here because this one has probably all the characteristics of a Cronwright. First, yeah. let's start with the entry, um, point of entry. Oh, yes. You can see the fusion crust. Yeah. Then um, you can also see something here called Wagmar glyphs. Yeah. Yeah. And shock veins, actually. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. something that this PC really, it's also quite quite big, actually. That's uh, the second biggest one I have. But it's all very typical for a crown light. I mean, these are what you're gonna find in a desert today in Morocco or somewhere, but I don't find these myself, I bought them. And in just uh, November 10, I think, yes, they're gonna be an exhibition again. And I will buy surely a lot of specimens there show off nice. and this time yeah. i can be also confident that that i really know what's what i'm going to buy okay exactly. and then i, what I also want to jump in luke and say that you you may be able to interact with several members of our crew maxime denonson marco geyser um, these are names that, that he, he's already mentioned to us. So it'd be super cool if there is a, a, a meeting of the, of the crew, a European style. <laughs> that would be interesting. Yes, I would definitely not uh, be against this because I like traveling, so no problem. I want that. Mm -hmm. uh, let's continue with this one then because there has been an explanation mm -hmm. to me recently about this one. It's about these cracks here that are from weathering and are actually filled with um, sand from the desert. And see if I can zoom. No, I cannot zoom it here. Okay, but you can see the sand inside. Mm -hmm. But that's actually a quite heavily weathered corn right. Also quite nicely oriented, I think. Yeah, because there is fusion crust here. On this side, there is not so much actually. Uh, I have another corn right. I haven't shown that one earlier, but there was one guy from the US at that exhibition where I bought this one. And he looked at all of those pieces. He couldn't confirm quickly which was a meteorite, but this one, he said, that's definitely a meteorite because Absolutely. he saw this yeah. massive piece of, what is this, metal or crown rule? I don't know. Just no, it's that, a massive yeah, piece of metal. That's the nickel iron metal. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the first thing I saw when I when you picked that thing up. Actually, this thing wanted to bite me because it's very <laughs> sharp here. Yeah. So when I picked it up, it is, even though it's still very sharp, I don't know. Wow. And do you guys know what these holes here are actually? I don't really know. Are these also regmoglyphs or is they quite small? These small holes? Th those are likely either to be chondral blowouts where a chondral fell oh, yeah. out, uh, either through weathering or atmospheric entry, or also quite possibly, you know, these ordinary chondrites have bits of uh, iron sulfides in them and they weather out more rapidly. So it could be either of those. Yeah, I have heard about these blowouts on a, another video that you guys took, but here again, that's good to see now because I think I have this one for a long time, so I have keen. Yeah, you can see here, these are the crown rules, actually. Yeah. And little bits of metal, too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's uh, full of metal. This one is highly magnetic, very highly magnetic. But then I have also a doubtful piece that I don't know myself until today if it's truly a crown right or not, because that one is very weakly magnetic, doesn't have any fusion crusts. Visibly, I don't know what that actually is. So maybe you can guess what that is, if it's a meteorite or not, because I bought you this. You gotta give me $25. <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah. No, because it's okay no, now because- uh, uh, You know, it it looks it looks like a very low metal chondrite, very yeah. weathered low metal chondrite. I, I have some that I purchased and they look very similar to that. Um, there, yeah, I, I, I was hoping they'd be really beautiful on the inside and they weren't, but yeah, I, I don't, right off the bat, I don't see anything wrong with yeah. that one. L5 yeah, that or right. an L6. L6 or LL6. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Luke, so... I wanted, I wanted to close out your show and tell with, uh, 
something that you probably weren't expecting. You mentioned earlier that you have another, um, hold on, I'm sorry. You mentioned earlier before we were recording that not only do you collect meteorites, but you have another uh, hobby or passion. I don't know how far it goes. Oh, I was prepared pieces. for this question. So I have a showpiece if you want to see that. Yes, I would love to see one of your timepieces. Okay, so this here is around, it's a pocket watch. Wow. It's over 300 years old. Wow. And uh, that's one of, that's my other hobby I have. And, but I didn't repair that because that one here is just too old and fragile. I mean, these things were handcrafted and it took them months or years to make this. This is from France. That's a enamel dial porcelain. Mm -hmm. But the more interesting is actually the inside. If I can open that, this craftsmanship that's inside there. I mean, it's really, really astonishing. But they are quite tricky to open. Okay, I got it. Oh, my this is... word. Oh, that's a fusé. Uh, yes. Movement. Uh, quite scary to know, but these chains, they have been made by children. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Very I, didn't I didn't wind it up, actually. But yeah, not be you because you need a key to wind that thing up. I don't do that too often because if this chain snaps, it will then how much I paid for this? Yeah, two thousand euros will be gone. <laughs> yeah, there is wow. no spare parts for these things. No, uh, nothing. Yeah, you're not gonna find a child to fix the part. chain no. these days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It even it makes me a bit shaking to to open and close this stuff because they are notorious for breaking. But yeah, wow. I was prepared for this, and then I have something very classic. But this is really something. Everybody knows, I guess. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Wow. Man, but I'll I have... tell you what. That you you surprised me with that. With that. I I thought it was gonna be a, a beautiful pocket watch. I expected uh beautiful movement uh and gears and just beautiful craftsmanship, but I had no idea we were going back three hundred years, man. That's yeah, that's pretty, pretty cool, man. Yes, I was thinking that maybe somebody want to see that. That's why I brought it up. Mm -hmm. But uh, I rarely take it out because, yeah. yeah, it's a piece of history. And I see myself as a protector for these things like that. They survive another another maybe 50 years in somebody's collection yeah. without breaking down and then passing it on to the next generation people. It's like the meteorites. They are history, uh, ancient history. And we should take care of that and preserve it. Cure it, yes. And, and, and give the knowledge that we learn from this uh, to other people. So they know where universe comes from. They also know what humans did uh, hundreds of years ago. And yeah, that's so history. That's history important. and science is very important. It's underrated yeah. these days, I think. Yeah. Wow. I'm I'm super happy that you joined us, man. Um, Thank you. I, I'm, what a fantastic show, crew! Thank you very much, and uh, members. Uh, I'm, I hopefully will call out more of your names as we go. Uh, thank you for your support; it means an awful lot. Take care, guys.